Now, Islam again is not just like any other religion, just change name and then your lifestyle is the same. No. Islam is a way of life. Before you eat pork, when you become Muslim, you cannot eat pork. There's a difference. If you become a Christian, you become a, a free thinker, you become a communist, you become a socialist, you become a, 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 a what you call what? Uh, Baha'i, you become a Qadiani, you become a, any anything. There's no problem because there's not much different, just name. But Islam is a way of life. So I know that you are going to encounter that if your family don't understand yeah, how you feel. But as a Muslim, you must protect your deen. You say, Mom, I love you. I respect you. I love you, Father. I love you, Mom. But this is what I believe. I'm sorry. And the Prophet said, you must obey your parents as long as your parents don't force you to do something against your belief. Uh, once again, Alhamdulillah, welcome back to, the, to our class. And then, inshallah, we will start uh, this class by uh, listening to the question from our sister Heldi. Eh? Please, sister. And I think it's very difficult to know <coughs> whether I'm doing for Allah or for other people. Because before I was a Muslim, I was used to uh, pleasing others, making them happy. Because that made me happy. Well. Okay. So now it's, I think it's difficult to know. When I'm doing okay. Them. Okay. Now, Sister Aldi is trying to share with us how she feel about sincerity. Yeah? Whether before we become a Muslim, we may have been doing a lot of things. We may do a lot of good things too, but we do it because of our friend. We do it because to please human, to please our family, to please our friend. So now, when we come to Islam. We know that we must be sincere in our action, in our deeds, in whatever we do. But now the sister is saying we do not know yeah, whether we are sincere or not. Is that true? Yeah. How do you feel, other sister? Do you think it's easy for you to know whether you are sincere or not? Yes. Maybe for me it came quite time that you learned to <clears throat> now, to, be, to, to make it easier, <clears throat> you can check <clears throat> your sincerity. <clears throat> Example, normally you want to do something because of that person. Now, when you want to do the same thing now, and that feeling still come in. Okay? Now you know the feeling... Oh, I'm still doing for somebody, not because from well, for the sake of Allah. Immediately you stop. Immediately you stop. No. Then you ask Allah for guidance. Inside your heart you say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive me for that. And you ask Allah to help you, oh Allah, make me do this thing just to please you. So when you want to do something to please Allah, there is certain uh, rule and regulation, certain condition. Number one, whatever you do must not go against Allah. You cannot do something said to please Allah, but in the same time your action is against Allah. It cannot. That means whatever you do is something that Allah is pleased with. I give one example, sis. Now this is your friend, normally when he has a problem, she asks you for some help. Can you help me give me ten, ten dollars? Normally you give because you, you like to help your friend. 
But now you know, I give it just because of him, not because of God. I'm not the gift, I keep it. No, I'm sorry. But there will come a time you want to give. Now I'm the gift for the sake of God, but I want to know, why do you want this $10? For what? You know, I want to smoke. No, I, <laughs> no. you say, I'm sorry. Because we know smoking is haram. So I'm not going to support you because of that. You do something that's wrong, I won't give you. I'm, I'm not going to support you for it. I'm not going to participate. Because I want to do for the sake of God. I only help you for the sake of Allah, something that please Allah. Maybe you want to buy some food, okay. But I know that you are a drug addict. I'm not going to give you money anymore. I buy you food. You see, that's what you now. There's uh, some, some changes now. You can, no, no, I don't need food. I just want some money. No, no, what is the point you want the money? Because I cannot give you this halal money. I, I, I earn with my own sweat and then you go and by drug, it's not. I help you for the sake of God, for the sake of Allah. That means I'm helping you in the way that Allah allowed me to help you. You understand that, sis? You understand that? I give you another example. In the time of the Prophet, why Prophet Muhammad said, the best prayer for the man is in the mosque. For the fardu prayer. For the obligatory prayer. All the optional prayer is good to pray at home. Why? Why you pray optional prayer is highly recommended at home? Because this is not obligation. It's optional. When you pray at home, there is really come from your heart because you want to pray. No one see you in the house. But in the mosque, a lot of people is seeing you. Here stand, here stand, you also stand up. You know? Because the pressure group is there. That's why the Prophet said, anything optional, don't do in front of people. Do by yourself. You, you follow that, sis? Yeah. Few things. i give you another third example. Yeah. How can you be sincere? Example, just an example. Uh, one of our brother, Frederick. Maybe tomorrow is Frederick's birthday. Example, I'm not saying you're going to celebrate birthday. It's his birthday. He's a good friend to you. Yeah? So Sister uh, Mariam may want to give, her, give him a present. Send him a cake. Alhamdulillah. Now, after one month, it's your birthday. Frederick don't send you a cake. He will come to you. And he will say, you don't have any birthday cake for me. <laughs> now, next year, the thing happened again. It's Frederick's birthday. You send her another cake. And after a few months, it's your birthday. He still don't send any cake to you. How do you feel? How do you feel now, sister? You think that third year you send a cake to Frederick? I say, Frederick, he don't even think of me. I have to remember his birthday, he don't remember my birthday. Or he remember, but he don't send a cake. Don't they have one whole cake? Just one piece or so, alhamdulillah. But he don't care. But you care. But if you are sincere, you don't think about it whether he give you a cake or not. I keep it. Every year I give him cake. First year, one cake. Second year, two cake. Third year, three cake. More cake. <laughs> because I'm sincere. Because if I'm not sincere, I'm comparing now. If I give you one cake, at least you must pay, give me one cake back. That means you are not sincere. Whatever you do, you want him to pay, repay back to you. That is not sincerity. Sincerity, I give, I don't care. I don't expect you to give back to me, no. Like marriage, you know? Marriage is give and take. Marriage is give and take. The husband give, we take. You know? And the husband cannot say, now you give me to me, no. It's a one way, one way. He give, you take, he give, you take. That is marriage. Example, yeah? He is his responsibility, he must be sincere. 
You got it? Alhamdulillah. You are clear about that? But you, you will know, like what you just said, the sincerity will come and you will feel, hey, no, I'm not sincere. Stop. You counsel yourself. You talk to yourself. Inshallah, then Allah will help you. Naam, sister. Maybe in a case it would be difficult for a brother to know whether he's sincere or not if it comes to, uh, to, to, to go on. Can, can you raise up your hands louder to, a bit? To, to fight for Allah in, in war. In a war? Yeah, in jihad? Because it's, uh, it's a part for him. So it might be difficult to. Whether, whether he go for the war sincerely for the sake of Allah or not. Because it's hard for him, so he has to go anyway, but he has to prepare his heart for him. Okay. Now, now the sister, what the sister or, Mariam, yeah? Or Salah. Yeah? Or, or now you say a brother is going to pray. Now whether he know that praying is an obligation, is a must as a Muslim, but now whether he's sincere worshipping Allah or not. Now, this is very, anything that is far is wajib, whether you are sincere or not, do it first. You cannot say, I'm not sincere, so I don't to pray today. No, you still have to pray. If you are not sincere, your prayer have no value. But your prayer will be accepted, only no value. You understand that? That means Allah accept no reward, just accept you have done your job, finish. But if you do sincerely for Allah, Allah will multiply the reward. لِكُلِّ حَسَنَ أَشْرُوا أَمْثَالِيَ Ten reward. But if you just do for the sake of doing, that means you have fulfilled your responsibility. That's all. You cannot say, I don't think I'm sincere, so I don't want to pray today. So you still must pray. Yeah, if like you go to work in the office, I don't think I'm sincere to go to the office. You still got to go. You still got the work, only the quality of your commitment may be different. But you must be in the office because this is your responsibility to be in the office. You follow that, Sister Maryam? Yeah. Sometimes, of course, again, if a person are not sure whether he or she is sincere or not, he must go to see a scholar and seek the advice. Talk to the scholar, let the scholar help you. This is very important. If you are not sure, you must go and seek for advice, so that people will guide you. You need some kind of uh, uh, backup support now. Like if you want to go in jihad, you must know. What kind of jihad is it? What do you know about jihad? If you don't know, just emotional, don't go. There is rule and condition for jihad. Do you know that seeking knowledge is also a jihad? There are some people who want to go in jihad, go and fight in a war, but they don't even pray. <laughs> what kind of jihad is that? How can you declare jihad? You don't even worship Allah. You know, it's just emotional. And this is not good for us. Any other question? No, sis. About the salah. Pray for, it's like Allah doesn't need anything from us, but still when we pray, we do it for Allah. Does it mean that when we do it for Allah, does it mean that we do it because Allah told us to do it? Is that what it means? To do it for Allah? Yes, of course. The sister is asking when we make salat, do we uh, do it for the sake of Allah or because Allah wants us to do it? Yeah? Because we know it's an obligation, that's all we do it. Of course, Allah don't need our prayer. If you don't to pray, you think Allah is going to lose anything? No. He don't lose anything. But you will be the loser. But whatever Allah wants you to do is for your own good. Not for Him. He don't need all of us. But it's good for you. So it's like that I do it for my, my sake because Allah is... Yes. Number one, of course, it started that I do because Allah wants me to do. Because if Allah don't want me to do, why must you do it? You don't do thing, any act of worship that Allah don't want you to do. Because you cannot create your own worship. 
you must worship Allah in the way Allah wants you to worship. When the Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca for 11 years, he never called anybody to worship Allah because Allah didn't make Salat an obligation yet. Salat is only obligated after 11 years of the prophethood when the Prophet was invited for the night journey, Isra one Mi'raj. You remember that? You remember that, brothers? The, light, the night journey where the Prophet was invited by Allah to travel from Mecca to Al-Aqsa to Palestine. From Palestine, he was raised up by Allah to the journey of Sidr al-Muntaha. And there, he met all the different prophets and then he went to an area, a zone, even Angel Gabriel cannot enter. Angel Gabriel said, this is the maximum I can go. <coughs> this is Sidratul Muntaha, I cannot enter this zone. It's not for me. So the Prophet got to go there alone. And that's where he received the prayer, the Salat. Then only he taught his Ummah to pray after 11 years of prophethood. That means you cannot form your own act of Salat, no. If Allah said pray, then you pray. If Allah said fast, then you fast. When the Prophet one is Mecca, there's no fasting. Fasting was only made obligatory after Hijrah, when he migrated to Medina. Of course, you do because Allah wants you to do, and now you do not for the sake of people, for the sake of Allah. Okay? The highest level where the kingdom of Allah is. Yeah? And above there is a throne of Allah. And this is the area no prophet have been there. No angels have entered this area except Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, it's very important I want to touch about this. Why? Because as new Muslim, revert on also maybe those who are born Muslim, but if you don't learn about this deen, you don't know. So, before we talk about other things as a revert, we must understand the foundation of this deen, this religion. So that any time when your friend, your family asks you, you know how to present Islam to them. And they know that you know what you are doing. You know what you believe in. And it's very important. Yeah, very, very important for us to know what we believe in. Even a lot of people who became a Muslim, in my country, 90% who come to Islam because they want to get married with the Muslim. Male or female. No problem. It's nothing wrong. This is the reason. But if you don't take the trouble to learn about this deen, then after some time, you will find that you are living in a lot of problem. You are facing a lot of problem. But when you have the deen, the deen will protect you. No? The deen will protect you, inshallah. Yeah. Now remember now, six articles of faith, five pillars of Islam, one pillar of Ihsan. And this was asked by the stranger, you remember earlier, I talked about a stranger. He asked the Prophet and the Prophet said, Ar Ihsan an ka anna ka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yara. This is what Ihsan is. And then that guy said, Sadaqta, you are telling the truth. And then he asked again, tell me, when is the day of judgment? When is Qiyamah? When is the doom day? And then the Prophet said, the one who questioned, he knows better than the one who has been questioned. You know, so the Prophet answered that. Because the Prophet don't know when is the doom day. Allah hide the time of the doom day. He said, doom day is near. When? Only Allah knows. So this man, this guy said, Sadaq, you are telling the truth. Then, he gives salam to the Prophet. He left. He left. So the Prophet asked the companion, do you all know who is that guy who just came in just now and questioned me about this and this and this? Gabriel, Allahu Akbar. 
They said, no, only Allah and the Prophet know. Who is this guy? He seems to be a stranger. If he is our neighbor, we should have known him. We have been together, but no one knows him. None. The Prophet, there is Gabriel. That is why, if you go to Medina, there is one gate you call the gate of Gabriel. Where Angel Gabriel entered this gate yeah, to meet up with Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So after that, he disappeared. And then the Prophet said, The angel Gabriel is here to teach us and confirm the foundation of this deen. It's based on six articles of faith, five pillars of Islam, one pillar of Ehsan. Now after you know that, then this is what we must learn. Number four, six hukum in Islam. What is hukum? What is hukum, brothers and sisters? You know what is hukum? No. Hukum is the law of Islam. Islamic laws. The rule and regulation. Everything there is a hukum. Like prayer. There is a hukum. The do and do it in your praying. The condition required before praying. Yeah. Certain... Uh, what is obligatory in your prayer? All there is hukum. Yeah? The same go to fasting. When do you start to fast? When do you break your fast? What you can do when you're fasting? There is hukum. Zakat, hajj, everything there is a hukum. Now the hukum of Islam, the Islamic law is divided into six categories. Number one you call halal. You know as halal? Yeah, you know where's halal, brothers? Yeah, you know, halal food, halal drink, you know. Yeah. Number two, haram. Number three, wajib. You know where's wajib? No, no, no. Recommended is sunnah. Wajib means something that is obligatory, a must. Okay. And number five, makruh. Anybody know what is makruh? <laughs> makruh is something that people dislike. It's not haram. It's not forbidden. How do you say it in, 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 the, in, in your language? Forbidden? Forbid? Forbid. Forbid, huh? Forbid. Forbid. <laughs> it's not forbidden. Makruh is something that people dislike. Later on, I'll show you what is, eh, the, what, what do we mean by something that you dislike. And number six is harus or mubah. Mubah, yeah? Do or don't, no reward from Allah. If you do it, there's no reward. If you don't do it, there's also no reward. It's just something is up to you. You can choose to do or not. Now, what is important in this sixth hukum is what is wajib and what is haram? The second and the third. Yeah. The second is important for us to know and the third one. We go to the third one first. Wajib. Wajib is something that you must do. Something that you must do. It's not a choice. It's not an option. Something that you, if you don't do it, you break the law. You commit a sin. Okay? You understand that? Everybody understand? Now, I want you to write it down if possible. Wajib, the meaning of wajib means lazim was sabit. Lazim was sabit. Write down this word. Lazim. And Thabit. Lazim and Thabit. The meaning of wajib is Lazim and Thabit. Just write it down first, yeah? Lazim means something that you must do. 
And stab it mean how to do it is been is been what is been fixed. You cannot change. Something that Allah want you to do is been fixed by Allah. You cannot do it in your own way. You understand? Can you understand, brother? Yeah? Yep, Jared, you understand? Okay, Sister Maryam. Is it the same as far or is there... Yes, wajib is the same thing. Only different scholars use different terms. It's the same thing. Now, lazim, why do you use this word lazim and sabit? To make us understand, make it easier for us. Lazim means something that you must do. If you don't do, that means you break the law, you commit a sin. Okay? Number one. Number two, wajib is something that is fixed by Allah. Thabit, example, I give an example. The time of prayer is fixed. You cannot pray according to your time. Okay? The number of raka'at is fixed. Fajar, how many raka'at? The morning prayer, how many raka'at? Two. Can you adjust it? You know one day prayer is five times. Two, four, four, three, four. Now, can you say, I think Fajar, morning I make four. Because morning I'm free. I'm not busy. Afternoon I make two. I make some adjustment. At the end, 17. <laughs> Still 17 rakat. Can you do that? Can't. Because Allah fix it for you. You don't fix by yourself. The same go to Ramadan. Ramadan always... Uh, fasting fall in what month? Fasting fall in what month? Ramadan. Now, how, what is going to happen to you if Ramadan fall in summer? Do you have a longer day? Summer is longer day. So can you change? I only want to fast in winter time. No. If Ramadan fall winter, winter, Alhamdulillah. If fall summer, summer, Alhamdulillah. You cannot change. I want to, f I fix my own month. But I fast one month, one month. The same, I fast one complete month. But I fix when winter, I fast. You cannot change the month. Allah fix it. Hajj. Can you go to Hajj now? Yes, you can go. But for what? For Umrah. House, the day is fixed. Start from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, finish. Of Zul Hijjah. If now you go, you go to Arafah, you go in Wukuf, Arafah alone, one man. You go to Mina, you go and throw the stone. Nobody is there, alone. You can do all the ritual, the same ritual, but there's no hash because the time is fixed. And can you go to hash? You go to America for hash? Yeah? No, because Hajj is in Makkah. You cannot go to Medina for Hajj. You cannot go to Yemen for Hajj. You go to Makkah for Hajj. Place Allah fix. Time Allah fix. And that's why Lazim, Wajib, is something that you must do and the time is fixed. Nobody can adjust it. When you adjust it, there is not Wajib anymore. Okay? This is the meaning of wajib. And the interpretation of wajib, the tafsir of wajib, is whatever you do, you do it properly, will be rewarded by Allah. But if you don't do it, you commit a sin. If you do it, you will be rewarded. If you don't do it, you commit a sin. That is the interpretation of wajib. We understand that, brother and sister? Okay. I'm trying to move very fast, if you understand. If not, I'm going to hold back again. I'm going to repeat again. Haram. You know where it's haram? You know where it's haram, brother and sister? Okay. Now, I give a very brief one. Haram can be divided into five categories. Five big categories. Number one, food. Write it down. Number two, drinks. Number three, words. Words. Number four, 
action. Number five, dressing. Okay? We must identify. Haram, the meaning of haram, that one is the, the division, yeah? is divided in five main groups. But the meaning of haram is mamno. The meaning of haram is mamno. Yeah? Mamno. Mamno means thing that is forbid. Forbidden. <laughs> you call forbid? What? Forbidden. Yeah? Forbidden what you said in, in, in your life? Forbid. Forbid. <laughs> Anyhow. Now, and then the tafsir, the interpretation of haram is, if you do it, you commit a sin. If you leave it, you don't do it, you will be rewarded. Just the opposite of, of what? Of wajib. Wajib, if you do it, you'll be rewarded. If you leave it, you commit a sin. But haram, if you leave it, you'll be rewarded. If you do it, you commit a sin. Okay? Okay. Now, haram, I said there are five categories. Food. What kind of food there is haram? Pig. Pig. <laughs> Number one. Other than that? Insects. Eh? Insect. Not all insect is haram. Some are halal. Yeah. Grasshopper is halal. Grasshopper. Yeah. yeah. The prophet said grasshopper is halal. <laughs> Only you're not used to eat grasshopper. <laughs> It's It's like crackers. Grasshopper is like crackers. <laughs> what about the lice? Loose is. No, we try to ident identify thing that is very simple. Pig. Haram. What is that other than that? Yeah, yeah and dead animal. May tata is haram. Number three? Yeah, that means a dead animal who is not been slaughtered. But if this animal got hit by a car, the halal animal, of course, then you manage to slaughter it, it's halal. Yeah. The blood, the, the, the cloth blood, you know blood? You know, the, you know liver can eat, you can eat liver. You can eat the heart of the animal that is halal. But what, it is also blood. What is the blood that is forbidden? What is the blood that is forbidden? The blood, like you know the Chinese, I do not know, these people here do it not. The Chinese love to take blood. <laughs> you know, when they slaughter an animal, a pig, or chicken, or cow, they purposely will take a bowl and collect the blood, the flowing, the running blood. And after that, they will put it under the sun for some time. And later on, they will cook it. No? After that, they will put it in the freezer. And after some time, it becomes like a jelly. So when they cook some kind of soup, noodle soup, you know, and they will put this, yeah, as part of their seasoning. Not all of them do that, but most of them do that. A non-halal restaurant used to use that. Halal restaurant, they use noodle, but they don't use that kind of blood. They cut it into small pieces, you know, block like cheese, you know, and then they put it. Tasty or not? Yeah, it's tasty, but it's haram. I used to eat that. That's why I know. I used to eat it before, and now it's not so common. Yeah, good. Yeah, 
This is the kind of blood is haram. Okay? Animal that is not slaughter. I give you one example. You have I do not know you have this in this country. In my country, you have Chinese who always serve the spirit. If they always drive in this road and that corner of this road they got accident. Most of the time there's accident at that corner. So they believe there is a jinni. There's a jinn there. A very hungry jinn take people's life. So before he take his life, he feed this jinn. <clears throat> He'll get a chicken, slaughter a chicken and put it in that corner so that the jinn will eat. So that the jinn will not disturb him. So every time he pass through this area, safe, um, no problem. Because he has fit the jinn. So the jinn become his member now. No? This is what they believe. And they put chicken, they put egg, they put fruit. No? Now, even, even they put fruit and egg. Is fruit halal? Is fruit halal? Yes. Egg halal or haram? Yes. Halal. <laughs> but now this fruit is to serve the jinn now. It cannot be eaten by us. When I was young, when I saw this thing, you know what I do? I look around, nobody. I don't take the, the meat. I take the egg and I take the fruit. <laughs> I say, free food. <laughs> <laughs> I will eat it and I will throw the skin out of the place. Then when this guy who is putting all these things there, when he comes back, wow, this place real, man, the gene is very hungry. <laughs> you see, now the egg disappeared, the fruit disappeared. They thought that the real gene is eating. <laughs> they forget that this gene is eating. You know? But before we do not know, we thought only pork is haram, chicken that is not slaughtered is haram. But now, are you still telling me fruit is haram? Are you telling me egg is haram? So I ate the egg and I ate the fruit. Now it's haram because this thing has been offered for the jinn. It's haram for us to eat. You understand that? You see the difference now? Yeah. It's like when the Chinese, New Year, they used to have oranges. You know the Chinese? They love orange. Orange is a symbol of prosperity, fortune. Because orange have gold color. <laughs> they love gold. They love gold. So sometimes they put all these oranges in the fridge. And they also have some, they put it in front of the idols, their God. Now, sometimes the orange in the fridge is finished. Gas come, he give it. No. There are times when I, I went back to my, my family house, Chinese New Year. Fruit is finished in the fridge. They say, okay, okay, I bring down the fruit there. Mm -hmm. From the idols, from whatever God they believe. And they said, no, take this fruit. I said, no. I said, why, why you can't eat orange today? It's orange. He said, haram. <laughs> he don't understand. I said, no, orange is halal, but I don't like to eat. <laughs> I cannot explain to them because it's not easy. They don't understand. You see? So to them, they say, it's okay. Now, they know God cannot eat. You know? It's just uh, respect. Put the food there. But when you put something you offer to other God, we cannot eat anymore. You understand that? This is haram. Food that is haram. Okay? Now you know, this guy, he went to, a, to the shop, a supermarket, he stole this pack of rice. He tell you, you know, I, I, I steal it. No? <laughs> it's haram for you to eat now. Because that action is haram. You understand that? Haram is not just meat, the pork, but every meat that is not slaughtered also is haram. You go to one place, you steal people's chicken and you slaughter. Hmm? It's haram because this is stealing. It's not yours. You didn't buy it. It's haram. Now, it's kind of uh, like Easter, but this time, you know, Easter. Easter time, it's um, holidays of the Christians. 
they may but wear the yellow in their houses everywhere. So that's when I I feel in this time I cannot have anything yellow in my house because it's like I'm I'm making Eastern with them. So I okay. say to my children, we cannot have this uh, cloth on the table because it's yellow in this time, but in the summer times okay. Okay. Yeah. That would be the best because we do not want to show other people that we are celebrating what they are celebrating. No. We have our own way of celebrating our Eid. They have their way. Lakum dinukum waliyadid. Allah said, we have our way, they have their way. So we cannot copy them. No. We have our own way. Yeah? So we must remember. Now, there is the haram of food. Just food. Anything that you are aware of, food, that is haram. Any animals that eat with their claws like eagles any animal that eat with their fangs like lion and tiger is haram because the prophet said you cannot eat anything that eat with their fangs and also with their claws can i ask you there is an animal that is with the pigs uh, like comfort can no, uh, in Arabic, it's a small uh, animal, it has... Uh, oh, you mean porcupine, porcupine. We have all the thorns, yes. yeah? And uh, in, in one country, I know, they eat them, yep. Muslims. And as I asked, isn't that uh, a beast? Because it, uh, it eats uh, mice, a mouse. You know? Yeah. It goes for mice. So then it will be uh, a beast, isn't it? No, you don't call that as a beast because they don't eat with their fang. Maybe they have their kind of food, you know, but if you can stay away, think that doubtful is better. Because you cannot say it's haram because Allah the Prophet never say that. And then the last thing about food is haram. I give you a simple example. Is chicken halal or haram? Chicken. Halal. But now if you eat chicken, you got sick. You are allergic to the chicken. Okay? If anything you eat bring harm to you, just to you, that particular food even is halal, it becomes haram for you now. Because you cannot yeah, cause harm to yourself. You understand now, yeah? You cannot generalize that one. That is only when anything that cause harm to you, that particular thing that is halal now, become haram for you. No, but, but this animal preys on, on other animals. It's okay. We're still okay. Some, some animals, that is their, their fitra. Okay, so what's the difference? i give you another example. There are fish who eat fish. Big fish is small fish. So yeah. what is the difference between this animal and uh, a lion? It's, it's bigger, I know. No, li lion, lion, he has fangs. Yeah, the tooth, yeah, the teeth. Yeah, but this animal don't have fangs. Snake, you see the snake? They have their fangs. So we can't eat it. Yeah, you can't eat it. Oh, wait, yeah? Then you go to, there is food. Later on, we come back to you again. Second category is drink. What is a drink that is haram? Now, Allah never said alcohol. Huh. Not alcohol, all alcohol is haram. Alcohol is a kind of chemical. You have alcohol used to preserve food. All the canned food, even is halal, they got some alcohol inside. Medicine, cough mixture, there is alcohol inside. This alcohol is not to intoxicate you. This alcohol is to preserve. Not all, you know the pain that you pain your wall, there is alcohol inside. The gum that they use to gum the plate, number plate of the car, there is alcohol. That kind of alcohol is not for drinking. The alcohol that is haram, it's not because of the alcohol, that the name, it, because it intoxicates you. Because the Prophet said, Kullu sharabin askara fahu haram. 
every drink that intoxicate you is haram. So what is haram now? Thing that intoxicate you. Not the name alcohol. Perfume have alcohol. It's okay. Now there's nothing wrong. Because that alcohol in the perfume is not for you to drink. It's a chemical. Anything now, remember because the Prophet said, any drink that intoxicate you, not any drink that have alcohol, that intoxicate is haram. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I've seen that you use a small portion of uh, alcohol in food, but that we say halal because it does intoxicate you. Ah, that's good. Yeah. How about now you go to a restaurant? They serve wine, but they don't give it. They don't put in the as a drink, but in the in the food. Maybe like you order a steak, yeah, uh, beef steak, you know, and then they put. And then they said they burned. Now the alcohol have gone away. No, no, no. Because the alcohol that they use is alcohol that intoxicate. But they say, but I just put a little for flavor, for flavor. <laughs> no. Anything that that drink contain a thing that intoxicate you, even a little is haram. Even a little is haram. Because that alcohol is alcohol that intoxicate you. You understand that? Good. Now I have three questions uh, about the, the sunnah prayer after. Wait, you are not into that yet. We are going to haram first. Okay. Uh, you know uh, uh, the candy. Okay, the candy. Uh, what do you call it? No uh, English gelatin or. Gelatin. Okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, some say that it's haram because. Uh, it's, it's an animal gelatin. Made of pork. Yeah, if you are sure it made of pork haram, you must be sure. But, but there are gelatin yeah. from the sea, from the seaweed also. So you must be sure. Now, if you are not sure, what should you do? You can check. But before you check, what should you do? Stay away. But I also heard that others say that when it's mixed, it's not pig anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what is haram is haram. How you mix the haram is still there. <laughs> yes, yeah, some people say that. Not what Allah said. Not what the Prophet said. People say that. So we don't think, we don't entertain what people say. We want to know what Allah and the Prophet say. Okay? Now, if you have doubts, the first thing you do is, the Prophet said, Da' ma yuribuka illa ma la yuribuka. Stay away from doubtful area. And go to the undoubtful area. It's easier. You don't want to have, oh, I eat first. After I have doubts, I will ask the imam. After the food enters your stomach, you want to ask the imam, what can you do? If the imam says, haram, what can you do? You want to flush it back. You, know, you want to poke your mouth and so you warm it up. Oh, it's inside. That's why right. before you eat, you better stay. I want to check first. If one day said, okay, alhamdulillah. So the Muslim is being guided by Allah. Anything doubtful, stay away. That's the best for you. Check until you are sure. Halal, it's the candy the same. Yeah? Be careful. But don't say that all gelatin is haram. No. You got animal gelatin and you got yeah, sea uh, with gelatin. It depends. So you must check. The, about uh, you know stone food, stone food, stone food. Yeah, stone food. If it uh, if it has been stolen, if you and if you eat it and you don't know, you don't know. Okay, how many letters are risky? He knows the one who steal. He know. He don't tell you. Come on, come on, have 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 dinner with me. So you eat, eat, eat. He don't tell you. Even after that, then only he tell you. You know, I stole it just now. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> <laughs> So what should you do? Warm it up. Oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm not, I don't commit sin. You commit a sin now. But if you know, then you say, please, I cannot eat. This is very important to understand that. Yeah? Now, I got two questions. Okay. Uh, about uh, food as uh, haram or halal. Uh, uh, one thing I tried to ask earlier, you know fleas, uh, small insects that suck blood, 
Okay, okay, the fleece. Because okay. I know we, people use them to make colors for candy or food. Oh, fleece. Is that correct? Yeah, because it's a form of blood. Yes. Yeah, and that's why you say it's haram. Yes. yes. It's a form of blood. And the other question is, I heard uh, birds with uh, swimming kids. Are they haram or halal? Like ducks. Bird or like duck? Yeah. Or oh, duck is? Of course, it's duck halal or haram. Because it's halal. Yeah, halal. Halal. Okay. Now, there is one common saying. Please bear with me. Among Muslim, there is a common saying, anything that lives in two worlds is haram. Have you heard about this before? Have you heard about this before? Huh? They are, you, in my country, people used to say anything that lives in both worlds. Water and land. Sea and land is haram. You understand that? Have you heard about this here? No. Yeah. Like crocodile? Because he got fang. <laughs> frog? Yeah. Frog. frog. Yeah. Frog. The prophet said, "Don't kill. Don't kill the frog." So if you can't kill the frog, can you eat the frog? <laughs> <laughs> now, but there are people who say there are certain crap you cannot eat. The blue crab, you can eat. The green crab, you can't eat. There are people who say, turtle, you know turtle? Turtle, you cannot eat. But the egg, you can eat. Huh? <laughs> the turtle, you can eat. The egg, you can eat. Where do this turtle come? Come from the egg. So this is opinion, some scholar. The people who are, mostly the people in India and Pakistan, the Hanafi school of thought. They said the thing that you can eat in the sea is only fish. You don't eat prawn, you don't eat uh, crab, you don't eat shell, take anything that is in the shell, you don't eat. But the Prophet never said it. That's confused. Yeah, that is some of their tradition. They thought that is not good. It's up to you. If you don't, you don't like to eat because you don't like to eat, then it's okay. But you don't say haram when the Allah and the Prophet never said haram. Mm -hmm. Now you have the food. You have the drink just now, any that intoxicate is haram. You are clear now? Okay. Now, how about certain drink that do not intoxicate? But when you drink, you get allergic again. That means your body yeah, cannot take this kind of drink. That particular drink is haram for you. Not haram, haram to everybody. Only to you. Okay. And what about the no medicine? Yes. Tablets or maybe intoxicate you, but the doctor is giving you to mm -hmm. this, is it? No, that mean it is not that the medicine intoxicate. The medicine want want to put you to sleep. Why? Because this kind of sickness, you need to rest. No, like sleeping pill, example. Yeah. Yeah. They want you to sleep. Because you have problem now, you cannot sleep. And because you can't sleep, your body cannot rest. You have a lot of other problems. So at that point of time, yes, you can do it. Okay? Now, we are just talking about the haram is divided into five categories. One is food, second is drink. We have finished food. Now we go to words. Word that is haram. What is the word that is haram? Mercy. Yeah? Curse. Yeah. Cursing people is haram. Backbiting is haram. Gossiping is haram. Slandering is haram. Lying is haram. Raising your voice in front of your parent is haram. Allah said, Fala taqullahuma uf. You cannot raise your voice in front of your parent. Even they are wrong. You must know how to talk to them. You must respect them. You can talk nicely to them, you cannot. Hey, mom! Hey, how can you say hey, <laughs> I don't like you. What is this? You cannot raise up your voice. It is haram. That word is haram. The four letter word, no, 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 no. We have a better word. We don't have to use that kind of word. You understand that? 
This is the word that is haram. Now you understand what? So that's why the Muslim always been reminded when you want to say something, check <coughs> the word that you want to say. Is this good or bad? Bad is haram. You got it? Inshallah, we will come back. Yeah? We will come back. We have a short break because yeah, of the recording. Okay? Alhamdulillah, it says. So now we are coming back to the third category of haram. Words. Words that is haram. We do. Because anything that's haram is not only applied for food and drink. Even your word can be haram. You commit a sin by cursing a person. You commit a sin by lying. You commit a sin by yeah, bad biting. To the extent the Prophet said, La taqlu janna namma. La taqlu janna qatab. Whoever creates slander, fitan, will not enter paradise. Whoever bad bite or gossip will not enter and the paradise. But gossiping and backbiting is so delicious. It's so nice. Talking bad about people, we enjoy. It's more creamy than all the ice cream. It's very tasty talking bad about people. But it's haram. Allah said, Hellfire for the gossiper and the bad. Number four, action that is haram. What is the action that is haram? What kind of action that is haram? Or what kind of act that is haram? Uh, hitting anger. Yeah? You're hitting anger. Yes. Of course, you injured a person hitting somebody is haram. For no reason. Mm. Killing is haram. Even you go and kill the animal without the intention to eat, just for fun, is haram. It's haram. If you want to go for hunting for deer, for rabbit, after you hunt it, you, you, you eat it, it's okay, but not for fun. Stealing is haram. This is action. Yeah, stealing is haram. Yeah, committing adultery is haram. Yeah. Zina, all this is haram. They are big and small haram. The zina, every part of the body can commit the zina. The Prophet did say that the eye, the zina of the eye, is looking thing that is haram. But this is not major sin, it's a minor sin. The ear of the zina of the ear, that means you commit a sin through your ear if you like to listen. That thing, people are you now talking in private, but you still want to listen. It's haram. You know, it's haram, you cannot do that. This is a matter of action. Peeping in privacy is haram. People got their own privacy, you want to peep it, it's haram. Spying is haram. Allah said, don't ever spy on People. If the person is doing something bad and he is hiding, he feels ashamed of the thing that is bad. He is hiding from the public and you still go and chase after him? That's haram. What he do is haram, but it does not give you the right to spy on That is also haram. This is a matter of action. Stealing, yeah, gambling, all this is the act of haram. You are clear about this now? And then lastly is dressing that is haram. What kind of dress is haram? What kind of dress that is haram? The haram dress. Right clothes. Yeah. The Prophet said when you cover your aura. Aura, well, you know where is aura? Covering the aura is not just cover your... Cover your skin, no. It also cover the shape, not to wear too tight. And the man should wear the man dress, the woman dress, the woman's dress. The man should not dress like a woman, the woman should not dress like a man. Because you must be who you are 
be yourself, the same go the other path. The Prophet said, Allah cursed the man who dressed like a woman and the woman who dressed like a man. This is something very important. Like gold, the man cannot wear, but the woman, yes. Because that is only for the woman. Silk, pure silk, the man cannot wear, the woman, yes. Are they najis? No. How about a man wearing a gold ring and go to pray? Will his prayer be valid? Huh? Mm -hmm. His prayer is valid. Yeah. Only his wearing of gold is haram. He commit a sin. The wearing of gold do not invalid the prayer. It doesn't invalid the prayer. Yeah, it's only that the action of wearing a gold for the man is haram. But if you follow the, the, the proper condition of the prayer or the do and don't of the prayer, your prayer will be accepted. Now, please. Um, when you said that, because uh, I didn't know that, so I wondered if, uh, if a lady, uh, when the salah comes and she finds herself, uh, she can't find her salah garment, and uh, for instance, the salat is the times goes out. Can she pray without this uh, jana and will okay. it be accepted? Salah? I'll come back to your question when we come to the. Yeah, you can say that this wajib. Now, you see, wajib to pray. When you want to perform your prayer, there are conditions yeah, that you must fulfill. One of the condition is you must cover your aura. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you're caught in a situation, you don't have anything to cover your aura. At that point of time, you still must pray. And Allah will accept <coughs> your prayer. You do your level best. Allah said, But as a Muslim, wherever you go, you must get yourself prepared. As a Muslim, when you are traveling, you must get things prepared. I know there are some sisters, uh, you know, believe that they are in prison. They are in prison. Yes, and they don't have this clothes. Okay, yes. They are not given the right. Mm -hmm. They are worried that you will hang yourself in the prison, no? So, so what can you do? They give, you know, you wear shorts and so on. At that point of time, it's Darura. When Darura, Allah said, Try your best. Like a person you know, in the jail, and then they chain you because you are a very dangerous yeah, uh, prisoner. You know? So they chain you. So how are you going to, to go and take your wudu? They don't give you that. At that point of time, the time of prayer comes in, you just pray. Even with that wudu, your prayer will be accepted. Because there is darura. Yeah, there is necessity that you cannot do more than that. Okay? Now, are we clear about the the haram? We are clear about the five yeah, category of haram. Wajib, we have cleared that. You do what is wajib, what you must do as a Muslim, and you stay away from what is haram, you save your iman. That means your deen is safe. Now, how can you know that? How can I protect myself? How can I be a good Muslim? You just do what Allah wants you to do and what the Prophet wants you to do and stay away what Allah and the Prophet forbid you. You become a very good Muslim. It's not difficult to be a good and whatever Allah wants you to do is for your own good. Whatever Allah harams forbid you is also for your own good. Don't steal. Don't rob, don't cheat, don't do it. It's for your own good. So you live in peace. Nobody disturb you because you know you don't do anything bad to other people. You know? If you don't steal, you don't do bad things. If the policeman walk in front of you, the police look at you, or the police come towards you, what do you do? What? Are you afraid? Nothing. Yes, uh, good morning. <laughs> How are you? Then no problem because you know you don't do anything wrong. But when you do something wrong, you saw the police. 
or suddenly you are at home, look, resting, police car just come in, stop in front of your house. How do you feel? You think you're tired to run away? Why do you want to run away? Because you know you're guilty. <laughs> The policeman may just want to you know, come and just say, hello, everything okay? Now you run now, why? Why do you run? <laughs> you know what you, why, why, what you are doing, you see? So you just do what Allah wants you to do, you see, you have no problem. And you stay away what is haram, you find that wherever you go, you feel safe because nobody is going to harm you, nobody is going to do anything bad because you are not a bad person. That's what Allah wants you to do. Now, you come to the third one. Sunnat. Sunnat means something that the Prophet encourage you. Okay? Now, the Sunnah of the Prophet, the Sunnah of the Prophet is divided into three main categories. The Sunnah of the Prophet is divided into three main Category, yeah. This is something that I like to share with the other. This is Sunnah Kauli. Fiqli and Takriri. One, two, three, four, five. When you talk about sunnah, you are talking about what the prophets say, Kauli. Kauli means the saying of the Prophet. Fi'li, action of the Prophet. Takril means the silence of the Prophet. You understand that? When you talk about Sunnah, you are talking about whatever, yeah, or what, whatever the Prophet is involved in. There are sometimes the Prophet will say, there is his saying. There's a kauli. There are sometimes the prophet don't say anything, he just do. And somebody will witness his action. And they will talk. I perform my ablution like this because I saw the prophet perform the ablution like this. This is the action. Takril means the silence of the prophet. Something that been done in front of the prophet and the prophet have no comment. Keep quiet. Neither he said, okay, neither he said, no. His silence means it's okay. Takril is his silence. Yeah. Example that I said early, the prophet never eat dub, the desert lizard. But Khalid loved dub. Now when he ate the dub, the prophet never said anything. If the Khalid didn't ask the prophet, neither he give him any answer. But when Khalid saw the Prophet didn't eat this dog, he started to ask. Because if the Prophet sees something that is wrong in front of him, if wrong, he will stop him. His silent mean is agreeable. You can do. Yeah? Now, Kauli and Fatli, among the three, which one comes first? The one that comes first is his saying. His saying is his command. When the prophet, now, give you an example. When he said, do this, we should do. Don't do what the prophet do first. 
you just follow what he want you to do. You understand that, brother and sister? They adapt the manners of following the prophet, the sunnah, the third. Is that you do what the prophet want you to do first. Because there are things that you cannot do. It's only for the prophet. Not for you, not for me. Yeah? Later on, I will explain to you. So, Kauli and Fairly and Takril, Kauli come first. Fairly come second, then Takril. What is Kauli, brother? What is Kauli? Saying. What is Fairly, sisters? His action. What is Takril? His silence. Yeah? Now, under the Qawli and Fa'li, this is the Sunnah. The Sunnah means the saying of the Prophet, the action of the Prophet, and the silence of the Prophet. Then you have Wajib, Sunnah, Adat, Ibadat, Khas, Am. Sometimes the saying of the Prophet becomes an obligation. It's not encouraged, recommended anymore. It's a must for you to follow. I give you one example. If you look in the Quran, the book of Allah, do you come across Allah said, performing fajr prayer to rakat? Did Allah say that? Do you get the reference in the Quran? Do you get the reference in the Quran? Allah said, zohar prayer, noon prayer, four rakat? No. You got it where? Where do you get it? From the reference of Prophet Muhammad Hadith. So, if he said, perform Fajr Turukat, the Turukat is Sunnat or Wajib? The, the Fajr prayer, Turukat. It's far. It's Wajib, you must follow. People may say, but the Prophet never say you cannot perform Subo or Fajr three Rakat. So I want to make three Rakat. Any form of ibadah that is wajib, if it's been confirmed that the Prophet said two, two is wajib. You cannot change it anymore. You understand the qaeda, sisters and brothers? There's one qaeda, one usul, one basic foundation of hukum. The difference between the hukum of ibadah and the hukum of Adat. You know what is Adat? Tradition. According to the law of tradition, listen carefully, according to the law of tradition, anything you can do, just do what your tradition used to do, do. Until Allah or the Prophet said, no, this one cannot, then you stop. You follow me now? Any law of tradition, you can do. As long as Allah and the Prophet never said no. Any law of ibadah, not tradition anymore. Any law of ibadah, act of worship, you cannot do until there is a command for you to do. You, you get the difference? It's a tradition. You have been doing it. So you carry on doing it until you find a dalil that Allah or the Prophet said, don't do it. Don't be like the kuffar. Uh, if the Prophet said, don't act like the disbeliever. And again, the Prophet said, when you eat some food, don't blow at the food. So if you want to prepare a cake, take the cake. But don't go and put a candle around the cake. And then, boom! <sighs> Happy birthday to you, ba ba. <laughs> no? You know what's happening when you blow the candle? You know, all the saliva is going into the cake. No? <laughs> if you can see with the microscope, oh, oh okay, I'm, I'm, hung, I'm, I'm okay, no? 
you know that's why the prophet said don't blow towards your food yeah and also the prophet said if the drink is hot like hot coffee hot my don't blow towards the drink because this is all the germ that's going out if you want to make it fast put in a bigger cup so it get cold faster or put one cube of ice but don't blow just have patience because anything you blow you're blowing all the bad thing inside the drink and you're drinking it back it's not healthy for you yeah it's what is inside what it come out is not good they say you're taking oxygen think that is good and you take the let it out there. yeah it's a cycle you see you eat good food after you eat what do you do <laughs> yeah you know what to do you know do you think anything you eat good it come out good <laughs> you know you take honey you take it come out like honey it smell like honey no so you must know that the saying of the prophet sometimes also become wajib example did Allah in the Quran said you cannot perform your prayer your prayer is not valid if you don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha when you want to pray must you recite Fatiha sisters when you want to perform your prayer must you recite Surah Al-Fatiha must you recite if you don't recite Fatiha your prayer is not valid La salah liman la fatiha. Who said? Allah said, no. The hadith said. Now the saying of the Prophet now is wajib. It's not sunnah. Just to show you some example. Not all saying of the Prophet is sunnah. When it is a command, it becomes a must for you to follow. When it's not a command, it's an encouragement. Then it becomes optional. <laughs> Wait. And don't worry, I'll give you all the time to ask. Adat and Ibadat. And now we go back to the law of tradition. Tradition said, you can do anything you used to do until there is a law said haram. Until there is a law said haram. Yeah? You can eat anything you used to eat because you used to eat this and that. Eat! Until Allah said, this is haram, then you stop. Okay? You can drink any drink you used to drink until I was, this is harap, stop. You understand that? There is adat. But ibadat, you cannot do when there is no command from Allah. Like Prophet Muhammad, he never called people to fast when, before hijrah, because there is no command from Allah to fast yet. He never called his people to, 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 what, to pray until the night journey is right in Mi'raj. You got it? You understand that, brother? Alhamdulillah. We have another break, inshallah.